All right, well, we want to talk about censorship of one ideology and not another. Um, and this is an important week to do that. So let me get this straight. Tucker Carlson should be held responsible for the Buffalo shooting of 2022 because he validated race ideology that was important to the shooter. Do you remember that narrative that was flying all over the place yeah. after that shooting last year? But we cannot even discuss gender ideology of the Nashville shooting this week without getting censored. Uh, that is happening. Now, we are going to discuss this mass shooting, and I want to present this caveat because we normally don't uh, cover mass shootings for a couple of reasons. When I was a newspaper reporter, we were careful about not doing things that we thought might create copycats. Um, and so there is definitely a danger of romanticizing these types of events and cr inspiring copycat events. Um, and also, I do not ever want to commit the sin of reducing mass shootings to one thing. I think that is what is so odious about what politicians do is that as soon as this happens, we get a tweet, thoughts and prayers, mental health, thoughts and prayers, gun control, thoughts and prayers, toxic masculinity. Um, that is dangerous reductionism. It does not solve the problem that American children are not safe to go to school without the risk of gun violence. Um, what I want to talk about here is competing ideologies, though, and their ability to be spoken in the age of censorship. Because this week we saw that one radical ideology is protected and the other is vilified. And what I would like to make the case here is that all radical ideologies should be rejected because why does someone become radical? It's because they feel so powerless in this world that they think they have to then act out in violence. It's like living as a toddler because you have no power to create the world that you want to live in and you feel like you have to then become violent. That's sort of the definition of someone who's radicalized, right? The Nashville shooter was a transgendered biological woman, and they left a manifesto that has yet to be released to the public. The Buffalo shooter, meanwhile, was a white male who also left a manifesto that he released himself, and it was focused on w race and white replacement theory, meaning that the white race will be a minority in the near future. This was his um, ideology, and that caused him so much anxiety that he allowed them to inform his actions and took resorted to violence. Now, here is CNN at the time, Brian Stelzer. Stelter. Do, yeah, don't miss that guy. Uh, blaming the Buffalo shooter's ideology and Tucker Carlson on this mass tragic shooting. Another hate crime at a grocery store. Those words shouldn't even compute. They shouldn't fit in the same sentence. A hate crime at a grocery store. This time it was Buffalo residents in a predominantly black neighborhood who were just trying to take care of their families when a white gunman opened fire on Saturday, killing 10 people and injuring three others. All the evidence so far suggests that this young man, this suspect, just 18 years old, was poisoned by lies and BS from online message boards. Now police, members of the media, are going through his so-called manifesto full of hateful memes and ideas and some of the same messages shared by the Christchurch mosque killer. Yes, it's the great replacement theory rearing its ugly head again. This white replacement nonsense. It convinces isolated men on the internet that a cabal is replacing whites with people of color. It's the same conspiracy theory you hear in primetime on Fox News. So it's important, no, it's essential to map the media environment that preys on white fear. Okay, the media environment is what they call this ideology is validated by media environment. So it's contextual. So that shooting should be discussed in terms of the media environment, right? Okay, for that guy. For that guy. Uh, and here he is making a connection to Fox News and Donald Trump, blaming them both for validating the shooter's ideology, even though the shooter's manifesto specifically said that he hated Fox News. Right, that there is a complex conspiracy theory that's as old as our American society and in which right. uh, white Americans are, are being told and being poisoned through uh, the internet but also through some relatively mainstream uh, media organizations on the right being told that they're facing a demographic crisis uh, and that they have to stand up for themselves. And, well, and, and let's it, just be clear, Wes, you're talking about Tucker Carlson, you're talking about Laura Ingram, you're talking about mm -hmm. the biggest stars on Fox News. Is yes. it too simplistic to reduce this to a single television show though? Yes. Uh, no, I mean, no, I'm it's, seeing a lot of that on social media. Just blaming Fox. Just blaming Tucker. And I think there's a lot of blame to go around. 
There's a ton. I mean, I mean, look, let, let's be clear. Uh, the stuff Tucker and Laura Ingram say every night, it, it, it could be written by white supremacists very often. There is a section of this manifesto uh, where the shooter starts talking about, people always say diversity is strength. How is it strength? What do we, and it, it, I could hear it in Tucker's voice. He says this all the time. Okay, so this guy, Wesley Lowry, says later that we need to take ideology seriously if it could lead to violence. So can we replace then race theory with gender ideology and have a real discussion about that as it relates to the Tennessee shooting? My guess is that no one on CNN would actually no. do that. And this divide is important because we cannot condemn one form of extremism and protect another. We do so at our collective peril. Uh, when the Buffalo shooting happened earlier this week, no one worried that life last would year. get, or I'm sorry, the Buffalo shooting happened last year. No one worried that life is gonna get harder for white people because of this. I, I didn't see any of that, but that's exactly the connection the media is making about this shooting, that it will make things harder from the group of the shooter. Watch. Nashville police keep identify the shooter as 28 year old Audrey Hale, who police say identifies as transgender. That news has already prompted some attacks against the trans community. KPRC 2's Bryce Newberry picks up our coverage from here. Demonstrators at the Texas State Capitol Monday fighting against anti-trans bills being considered by state lawmakers as news broke that the Nashville school shooter identifies as transgender. It doesn't excuse anything that happened. I am concerned about how um, opposition and people who are uh, anti-trans will try to spin this. Concern about tweets like this from GOP Congresswoman Marjorie Taylor Greene writing, how much hormones like testosterone and medications for mental illness was the transgender Nashville school shooter taking? Everyone can stop blaming guns now. The comparison of they did it because they're trans is very unfair to trans people. Andrea Segovia from the Transgender Education Network of Texas joined Monday's battle at the Capitol. Fighting House Bill 1686, which would block doctors from providing gender transition health care treatment to children. Now with another reason for the Texas trans community to be in the spotlight and at least two months remaining of the legislative session, advocates worry the attacks aren't over. You can't say that because one person did something that's a characteristic or reason um, to be cruel to trans people. And tonight, while facts about the Nashville shooting are still surfacing, the human rights campaign says trans people are much more likely to be victims of violence rather than perpetrators. Writing in a statement, regardless of the reason for this shooting, the use of violence is reprehensible and we renew our call for common sense gun safety legislation. In the newsroom, tonight, I'm Bryce Newberry, KPRC 2 News. Oh, interesting. Okay, that Bryce last. Newberry, you should be ashamed of yourself for that, for worrying about the group of the shooter and not the group of the victims. Shame on you. Also, the statistic that you share in the end that trans people are more likely to be victims of violence than perpetrators is false. It's actually the opposite. It's demonstrably true. We've, we covered a riot this weekend in New Zealand where trans people were the perpetrators of violence. Um, this reporter actually picked up a microphone and a camera after nine-year-old babies were murdered to worry that the group that the shooter belonged to would not be safe. Now, did anyone do that when the ideology of the Buffalo shooter was, was I mean, because no. these are two different ideologies and we have to use the same if we're analyzing the media uh, landscape, right? This Bryce Newberry did not once mention the victims of the shooter. He is linking the gender bills to violence with val validation Damn him for that, literally. Um, I don't. I don't literally damn people, but if I, I that no, it's sentiment. It's I infuriating feel. when he just read that statistic yeah. off. He's like, "Well, trans people are much more likely to receive violence than uh, than not." And back to you over there in the newsroom. No, yeah. you, you literally just read a lie. You literally just lied to your audience to push some ideology and shows which ideology you're going to talk about. So now we're going to talk about the censorship of people wanting to make this connection. Does this exist in does this shooting exist in the ideology of the shooter? Is that something that's worth talking about? Is it possibly something that she was radicalized? Because a lot of Antifa members are transgendered and they do actually feel like 
words are hate and they must respond with violence because words are violence too. That is well, literally I, the, the, um, the thought process around this. Yeah, go ahead. Well, and I just want to point out like all of this political rhetoric makes the underlying things that could be important, not important. And that is the fact that this is a girl that was taking testosterone and we don't know what those testosterone levels do to a person to make them maybe, you know, think different things or think different ways. And that's all going to get swept under the rug and not even looked at because it's all about the ideology and protecting that. You know why we don't know that is because no one will do medical studies on it because it's unethical. It's unethical exactly. to submit children to hormone. And, and she was not a child. It's, it's, it's so you can only, um, you can only self-select, sub right? Like right. by pulling adults in like, Hey, does anyone want to volunteer? You can only test this for, on adults. Th for this test where we're going to check and see the mental stability of someone that pumps them, a, a woman that pumps herself full of male hormones. Yeah. Like, do you want to self-select right. into that test? Because we're not going to do it to children because that's what that's what Nazis would do. Now, it's uncomfortable to talk about this because a lot of liberals want to validate gender ideology, maybe because they just want to feel accepting because of good intentions, which is great. But there's no data that shows that gender transition cures gender dysphoria and anxiety that persists no matter what chemicals or surgery you do to your body. In fact, trying to live as a gender when people instinctually can tell that you're not that gender causes people a lot of pain. It's not society's fault that humans are meant to distinguish gender in order to mate with the opposite species. It is society's fault when we tell young people that if people instinctually call out your gender, you're being harmed and that you must then resort to violence to change that. And it's not good for anyone to overly focus on their appearance and the perception in the world. No one can argue that that is true. Like you tell your children that just worry more about what people think of how you look. Yeah, You'll you, be happier that way. Honey, instead of reading a book or hanging out with your friends, r I really want you to be concerned about what other people on TikTok think of you and your body. Yeah. Like that's good parenting. Now, as far as I know, no one was punished for linking the Buffalo shooting to the white replacement ideology, even though I think we agree that it is a dangerous oversimplification. Uh, but Twitter is suspending accounts of people linking the Nashville shooting to gender ideology. Um, now, I'm not saying that we should, you know, persecute white people or that, you know, I'm not I'm not at all discussing the merits of race replacement theory. I'm talking about why one group can freely talk about it and one group cannot. Why can we freely talk about white supremacy and shoot that down, but we cannot have a critical discussion about gender ideology? This is dangerous. Um, so here are some of the people who were speaking about gender ideology as possibly dangerous and were uh, punished by Twitter. This is Eliza Mondegreen, um, gender researcher, was locked out of her account for posting this image. This is about a trans day of vengeance that's planned for this weekend in Washington, D.C. Um, this is the image that was getting people, the, Twitter was scanning for this image specifically. Um, here is her notice from Twitter that she was locked for violating the Twitter rules. She contested this, said, you know, what is it? What are the rules I'm violating? They did not tell her. This is Benjamin Boyce. Um, he too was saying, you know, that he was po just posting uh, the image. He is a podcaster who discusses gen the gender industrial complex, uh, wherein the medical industry profits greatly from changing bodies with surgery and chemicals and medication. Um, all he said was the day of vengeance did not age well before it happened. You can't say that. Uh, the Federalist CEO, Sean Davis, was also locked out of his account for saying that the event still was happening in the wake of the shooting. So, you know, you would think that maybe this event would not age well and would be canceled, but it is still going forward. Recall when Donald Trump went to an NRA rally after a mass shooting and people thought that was offensive, but um, this ideology persists. The Daily Wire's Michael Knowles, Knowles was suspended for posting a Bible verse that mentions vengeance, as in do not seek it. Right. The, the Bible verse is about not seeking vengeance. Right. Uh, and he was um, he was punished for that. The, the Bible verse says, beloved, never avenge yourselves, but leave it to the wrath of God. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I shall repay. So it's like, don't seek vengeance. You can't say that. I mean, it's a pretty peaceful tweet.
right? Um, Marjorie Taylor Greene was locked out of her account. And in this thread, a Twitter executive responds to it because it's Ian Miles Chong um, who says that Twitter is, you know, cracking down on anyone who posts about this trans day of vengeance. And Ella Irwin is the Twitter representative saying, yes, we automatically sweep our platform and removed over 5,000 tweets about this poster. We do not support tweets that incite violence, irrespective of who posts them. Vengeance does not imply peaceful protest. Organizing or support for peaceful protest is okay. Um, so maybe Twitter is removing this because they're deciding not to promote uh, something that might glorify violence because that, you know, in the wake of January 6th, they said, oh, we should have censored that. Maybe, you know, you know this discussion. Um, but Marjorie Taylor Greene is saying, that's not true. You actually are punishing. I was locked out of my congressional account for seven days. Um, so it's not just they're sweeping it, but they are punishing the group that puts this event on, they say they do not mean violence when they talk about vengeance. Here's their statement. They're so sad about the victims of this tragedy, and they reject any connection between that event and theirs. Um, they say vengeance means fighting back with vehemence. A strong word. It's an alliteration, too. So you're just... <laughs> You're just substituting vengeance for vehemence. Uh, I mean, they're saying we don't think violence is the answer, right? It's a call for our allies to stand up and fight to bring down the forces that try to divide and subjugate us all. Well, then why don't you name your event the, a day of vehemence? Oh, well, or a day of... Like, like a, we, we, we promoted the rage peace. against the, the rage against the war machine uh protests yeah. we promoted that we had nick brana on the show roger waters uh, all these people who were speaking at that event like we were happy to promote having rage against war right right we want peace so rage is a good word you could use rage rage is an appropriate emotion yeah right yeah. you don't have to hurt anybody but vengeance if you're rageful right um and notice the open invitation the poster that's been taken down says wear a mask bring a friend this is an antifa call uh, to come and rough stuff up because they don't wear a mask having anything to do with COVID. Um, and now the event or organizers say this is still going to happen despite this mass shooting because they have, you know, distanced themselves from it. And I guess that's OK. Um, and, you know, so today they put this on TikTok. And I ask you, is this the material that looks like can you do you have music for this? There, there oh, no, I, I pulled it because of copyright. Oh, sorry. Okay. Then you can't see how <laughs> aggressive it is because it's like a... Ah, screw you, mother. Wait, 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 let, me, yeah. let, me, let me put it back up and then, <laughs> no, and then you, you, can, you, can, make the, you <laughs> can make the sounds for okay. it while it's going on. Um, so hang let's on. see if I can do it. Make sure you do it with vehemence, okay? It's like... Yeah. Like that. Oh, it's like death metal stuff. Perfect. It's kind of yeah, like that. Yeah. It was yeah. like that. Did I get that right, Philip? That sounds pretty good. Yeah. Do you yeah, remember? Was spot on. I mean, I was, I, I was, I was checking to see if we got hit for copyright for just how close you were to the so actual good. music. The band, yeah. Can, yeah. the band Cannibal Corpse wants to hire you. Yeah. <laughs> it was like, it, hire me, and next I'll do some beatboxing. Right. Um, so again, if we're going to follow the lead of the left and take all r radical ideology seriously, we've got to question the aggressive tactics of trans rights activists or TRAs. Uh, again, we covered the Posey Parker violent mob in New Zealand last weekend. There is a th faction that thinks violence is the answer because they think words are violence. Um, misgendering words, they think, require weapons to contend to, according to this ideology. And in both instances, we, of course, can bring mental health into this because gender dysphoria is highly correlated with anxiety. So shall we talk about mental health again and hormones? Again, is this something to take seriously? Why are these conversations being shut down by social media but the conversations around race being elevated because it fits into one comfortable narrative of the left. And there's another one that just doesn't. It's too uncomfortable. Well, and that's and wrong. Plus, you cannot question the pharmaceutical industry. Like we've learned that no matter what we have covered, if the pharmaceutical yeah. industry is involved in any way, shape or form, we cannot say anything about it. Yeah. 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 So if, if hormones well, and that type of medication is being pushed for young children, you better step aside. We should absolutely allow them to have as much of this, these chemicals but flowing not even through their children. bodies. This person was an adult, yeah. an adult hyped up on a chemical that 
her body does not naturally produce. Right. Uh, well, and, and Philip, I know you want to, I want to, uh, before you say something, the, I saw someone on YouTube that was talking about how they, you know, they were questioning, they were older, they were in their 20s, and they were thinking that they wanted to identify as male. They went to Planned Parenthood and they had them a prescription for testosterone the following day with no tests. Yeah. Yeah. You, yeah the following like, yeah. day. Like, because when well, the pharmacy, covered, and you're talking about, uh, yeah. We've shown yeah, you And you're talking about a hormone that's going to change this person's makeup, like, in, like completely change their makeup as a human being. Yeah. Right. I mean, ideology is not just like a bowl of trail mix where you just pick out what you want to eat, you know, and say, well, this sort of elevates my status on Twitter if I call out white supremacy, uh, but I cannot be critical about gender ideology because it will not elevate my status. Um, also, don't pick through trail mix. That's rude. Yeah. Don't pick out the like the, you should just the eat peanut the whole thing. M&Ms. Yeah. Don't be that guy. Mm. Well, and, right. and leave. The I was going to comment can, along with David, what David was saying about like arguing with the pharmaceutical industry. So like many people don't realize that you can refuse any medical procedure, any medical procedure, even a life saving procedure, you can refuse it, but you can be forcibly committed and medicated against your will. That is something like psychologically, you cannot refuse it. Hmm. So the, a court can't force you into brain surgery, but a court can force you to receive like medication for uh, if you are bipolar. So that yeah. I mean, we, when you look at like the, the laws we have on people getting committed, like the, the really like the, the pharmaceutical industry is very, very deep in what the, the psychological, you know, like like uh, industry. Yeah. Yeah. Because you I mean, you can look it up. Anybody can look it up, but you can be forcibly committed, but you can refuse any surgery, even life saving. Yeah. Huh. That's amazing. Yeah. Huh. I mean, you know, I, I think that, like I said, I want to present this in, in the context of what's being censored. Why can one group just sort of like work themselves into a tizzy about Tucker Carlson and white supremacy? And another group is censored for asking questions about a, a competing ideology. Um, why is that the case online? Uh, but at the same time, I don't want to reduce anything, any mass shooting to any one thing, because I really think that that's wrong. So yeah. um, I, if, if that was not clear, I want to make that clear. Right. Well said. Let us know your thoughts on this in the comments below. And uh, yeah, and please weigh in on all of our stories here in the comments below. We appreciate it. Like, um, uh, here's one comment that just came in, and I wanted to address it from Te Paranga Her Hermea. Te Paranga Hermea says, Clayton, why do you hate on China? It's so funny you say that because on this show, very often people say to me regularly, why are you pro China? <laughs> so. I love when I see like in the, I love like a day later, like we do like a story about how yeah. China's currency is being tied to gold and commodities and the U S dollar is tied to, and like arguably in my opinion, that's better. Right. And then the next day I'm critical because of what they're doing with a digital currency with, uh, having it programmed and, and expiring at a certain point. Um, and, and, and also surveillance and yeah. I'm critical of them. So, I don't, I'm just, I'm just presenting the news here. I'm, I'm critical of them and I'm, I, I call out when they do good things as well. But I also call out the propaganda, like the Uyghur stuff that we've debunked. I don't feel like we have any love or hate that you can sort of pull out as like, oh, that's their platform. You know, we take each story as it comes and try yeah. and look critically at it. I actually like when people say like, I can't tell what side they're on because we're on nobody's side. We just look at each story and try to be critical or, or yeah, thoughtful like or um, be, you know, critical things. Like someone said, oh, oh, if you guys are like pro Fox news, like, no, no. Like I, I interviewed Tucker Carlson here on the show, but then literally the next day I did a whole segment slamming Sean Hannity for being a warmonger. So I don't know, like pick your, <laughs> well, and it's also, you know? I saw somebody in the chat, like when we started talking about the topic earlier, they're like, oh, there's more of this anti-trans stuff. I'm out of here. But like, why is it anti-trans to have these conversations? It's not like, it's not like we're anti-trans. We don't hate trans people. No, we just want to ask questions just like anything else. Yeah, exactly. And I, I, I don't know. I am anti medical industrial complex. Yeah, I am anti hurting yes. people's bodies uh, for ideology and uh, ignoring, you know, straight Biology. biological determinism. Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and I am anti transhumanism. Sure. Absolutely. Yes. I am not anti dress like, you know, in a sort of gender nonconforming way. I don't give a shit. How you, you know, well, if I you want to wear a dress, if you want to wear makeup, if you want to like borrow my heels, cool. 
Um, but you know, you can't pretend that a male body has, can get, you know, uterine cancer or whatever. We just can't have those conversations. Seriously. Or, or that a male body can have a baby. Right. Right. That, that can't, I don't know, like what school you went to, but like you, that can't happen. And, and I, and I'm not down for anyone to like dogpile my kids for an instinctually calling someone a he or a she, like. I'm not down for that. You know, I'm not down for reordering society around one single ideology. Doesn't matter what it is. Can be gender, can be race, like no reordering society for ideology, period. So yeah, that's where I stand. But you know, we can talk about these things like completely, you know, it, each one, take them one at a time. Yeah, so, wear whatever you uh -huh. want. You want to wear a dress, great. Just uh, don't push pharmaceuticals on my on my twelve year old and tell them that they need to get a you know uh, get a hysterectomy or whatever. Um, keep keep that out of keep that away from me. Keep please keep that away from me. And that to me is like sinful and like really evil actually to push that agenda. Um, we are vehemently anti war on this show. Like that is one thing that we are absolutely will stand on the show. So that is, that is one big 100%. platform we had here anti war on this mm -hmm. show. Today's episode is brought to you by Sunday Lawn Care. Hey, there's something you might not know about me. Every college summer or even high school summers, I used to mow lawns for a living. That's what I did every day, nonstop, mowing lawns. And I, I absolutely loved it when the spring would hit and I'd get to be outside. And I love the completion feeling of a great lawn, getting my lawn mowed. My dad was a lawn purist. <laughs> he loved he loved making sure the lawn looked great. And so I love getting out there, digging in the garden, weeding, making sure the lawn looks perfect. And Sunday Lawn Care makes it easier than ever to enjoy your lawn. I mean, here's how it works. Sunday is everything you need to get the lawns you've dreamed of. I used to remember going to Home Depot and going back and forth trying to find out different fertilizers to use. Uh, it was awful, awful, awful. Well, this spring, if you go to GetSunday.com slash Redacted and you enter your address, you will get a customized weather plan created just for your lawn. No trips to the store, no hauling heavy bags since they ship straight to your home. You just need a hose, that's all you need, to apply the Sunday. You can fertilize your whole lawn in less time than it takes you to watch an episode of your favorite TV show. And they only use ingredients you can feel good about. No harsh chemicals, no long waiting periods, or trying to keep your kids and pets off the lawn. Simply apply, let it dry, and you're back to enjoying your yard. Sunday is easy and affordable. Some lawn care services cost more than $1,500 a year. But Sunday's full season plan starts at just $109. And Sunday is offering our listeners 20% off. That's right. The full season plan starts at just $109, and you can get 20% off when you visit GetSunday.com slash Redacted at checkout. Again, it's GetSunday.com slash Redacted at checkout. You have to put that get in front of there, right? GetSunday.com slash Redacted to get 20% off your custom plan.